Welcome back, everybody, to another RoboTaxi report. Before we get started, what I have before you is the Community FSD Beta Tracker. This is your way to get involved to help the other 80 testers that are a part of this in painting a broader picture to see how the system is performing overall and in several areas, including now some Canadian testers. Elon recently confirmed that there's about 100,000 beta testers out there, and on the last earnings call, challenged us to plot the data. That way we could also see the improvements in the system. This tracker dashboard is your way to do that, so I highly encourage you to go down into the description and get in touch with the man that started the tracker, Elias. His Twitter information, as well as the link to the tracker, will be down below. Now, I've been really excited to finally get back to these Robotax reports so I could show you what I was experiencing this last week with the new 10.11.2 update. Given my Model 3 was down for a little over a month due to needing new control arms, 10.10.2's sample size is far less than I would have liked. However, if you've seen my last few videos regarding 10.10.2 on the Robotaxi report, it's been an evident regression that continued to get worse and worse week to week, finally culminating in this 26% reliability rating over 77 total trips. What you can see below it is 10.11.2 seems to have reversed this regression and then some. Now, like 10.10.2, this is a small sample size size at the moment, but with extremely promising results. So as we go forward, I'm excited to see where this number will level out. With accurate testing and consistent methods, eventually there will be a local maximum for the way this performs in its current software build regarding RoboTaxi trips. I'm not sure if that'll hang around 60% or get up around 70%. Time will tell, and I'll continue to log every trip that I perform going forward. Today being Monday, I'm already starting strong. Out of the six trips I've done this morning, only one so far has been a failure. To reiterate for anyone who's new, success means that the trip needs to be completed without disengagements, otherwise the passenger would be stranded in a driverless taxi scenario. So hopefully that paints a better picture for what you're seeing here. This is a very strict metric, and one that a lot of people really wouldn't be thinking about yet. However, I've been doing this since I got 10.8.1, as you can see with the very large 328 trip sample size. That was impressive on its own, being 50% reliable at its current state, and now seeing that performance tick up in the proper direction, or the more desired direction, should be something that everyone should get a lot more excited about. Now, of course, there are a lot of variables, and I am one person. However, I am doing a lot of testing and recording a lot of information to bring you this data. Given the very apparent back and forth reliability that we've seen from patch to patch, we're pretty far from a point where we can start to see a trend line or make predictions about when we'll be closer to the 90 and 100% markers. So I am starting to notice a shift from disengagements and interventions going from the city more toward the highway. I can make one early prediction and we'll see how right I am, but I think we're not going to cross into the 80 plus percent threshold until we have a single stack merge. Frankly, the highway autopilot is far too slow, requiring confirmation or permission to change lanes, and there are a lot of scenarios where you have to get over quickly or you might miss an exit. In a customer scenario, that is valuable time for the customer, and I need to either take over or reroute, and in those two choices, I'm going to take over because the customer needs to get to their drop-off. Once we have a full stack merge, and the highway can be as quick and decisive as the city streets beta, that is when I think we can finally get over 80%, maybe even 90 100%, but I don't think we'll pass 80% until we have that stack merge. But we'll see. I'm going to continue to collect this data, and we'll get to see how close or far off I am from my predictions. With the notable improvements in 10.11.2, this next part is largely arbitrary based on my experience. I want to be very clear there. But this build got me thinking about the difference in each build's finesse decision making and execution. If you can think back to your experience with 10.8.1 when it came to making maneuvers like lane changes or getting into a turn lane like a double left or double right, more often than not, the car would jump into those lanes rather aggressively, exposing myself and my passengers to quite a bit of g-force with rather abrupt maneuvers and abrupt braking. But its decision making and execution was pretty decent, and I think that was reflected in the 50% reliability on robotaxi trips. Now as we moved into 10.10.2, I noticed an improved finesse right off the bat. The car was no longer throwing me into turns or turn lanes or exits or lane changes with an unnecessary aggression. You could tell that it was a lot smoother, at least in my experience. Let me know in the comments if you have shared those experiences or if it's been different for you but where I saw the massive drop in reliability was very evident in its decision-making capability or loss of decision-making and then executing on those decisions. 
More often than not, before a turn, the car would make a lane change into the incorrect lane or farther away from a turn, which would lead to either missing the turn or making the trip unnecessarily longer by having to reroute. And again, in those cases, I just take over. Customer's time is important. In this last week with the 10.11.2 update, I noticed the finesse stayed, but we got the decision making and execution back with some improvement according to what I have captured in my drives throughout the week. Now, again, arbitrary, but I wanted to put these numbers to reflect my experience and my opinion of where this is going and the 7 out of 10 also for me represents kind of an upper limit of what i think 10.11.2 will be able to do because while i am praising it for some massive improvements it is far from perfect certain areas are still giving it a very hard time downtown san diego is still a no-go and earlier this week escondido up northeast of me about uh, 45 minutes away it was almost impossible to get a successful trip out of that city I am not sure why, I don't know if there's a lacking of persistent memory, or if it's just I haven't driven up there myself enough, which may be more of the same in that category, or if it was just a bad day. It was clear weather, traffic wasn't too bad, but it had a very difficult time in that area. It does quite well in Vista, San Marcos, Oceanside, Carlsbad, and Maine, San Diego. Moving forward, we're going to take a look at city versus highway disengagements with the line graph I've been building on since 10.8.1. And here I have it segmented out in a way that is a little bit easier to visually understand. Now less is better, so we want to see the numbers going down. With 10.8.1, it was a little all over the place, but it stayed pretty low. And then with 10.10.2, you notice an immediate jump. And of course, this is also the time that I was in Vegas, and that was another challenge in and of itself. And after getting back, unfortunately, the car was down for a while. But now, having it back on the road with 10.11.2, you can see where the trend seems to be going the proper direction. That up spike in the highway disengagements, that right there was the Friar's Gauntlet. And that course beat the system up very badly. So that is a bit of an outsized disengagement number compared to day-to-day -day driving. So keep that in mind. Don't get too worried about that spike upwards. I think once we get the next update, 10.12 or whatever it may be, I'll then be able to condense all of this information into a point for 10.8.1, another point for 10.10.2, and another point for 10.11.2. What that'll do is smooth out the results in a more representative way as a whole for each software patch, and you won't have quite as many crazy outliers and spikes up and down. It'll be a little bit more intuitive. But until then, this is the best way that I can represent the data with regard to city versus highway disengagements. Next, we'll take a peek at disengagements versus interventions, looking at the different software stacks and try to ignore the weird zero intervention portion as I had returned from Vegas. I pretty much did that one road trip back along the highway and truly no interventions. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot going on, just a straight shot. And then the car was effectively parked for a month and a half. So that fourth intervention block that isn't really there and just... Try to block that out as a uh, irrelevant outlier. What we can notice here is that as disengagement seemed to be going up to 10.10.2, it's a pretty dramatic drop with 10.11.2, both in disengagements and interventions. Curious to see how that trend continues to go forward. As we get close to wrapping it up or take a look at the causation donut here, I have made a few changes to try to better describe what's going on here. Set of navigations, I've put down maps, so it's actually specifically talking about where the system is failing due to improper map issues or an actual navigation issue on the map. And I've differentiated that from system limit, which I'll get to in just a second. Unsafe to recap is basically any unsafe maneuver, going through corners a little too fast, maybe getting too close to a curb, getting a little too close to another car. Not quite a critical scenario, but something that is still not exactly the safest thing that it can do. Down from there, we have system limit and system error. On the previous causation donut, system limit would also kind of have been pushed into either unsafe or navigation. So I wanted to break this aside because there are certain things the car has a very hard time with as a limiting factor in the system. Like one thing that stands out immediately are U-turns. It can't do them. It's not programmed into the system yet. The other thing the system has a very hard time with due to what I believe to be a limiting factor is seen in Chuck Cook's unprotected left turns videos where he's trying to pull out through really high speed cross traffic. I've had a few places like that here in California where I'm in that high speed cross traffic scenario needing to make an unprotected left and my system won't even let me go unless I tap the accelerator. When it actually makes you give it permission, I consider that a system limit because it's not like the rest of the system's capabilities where it can just drive. It needs your permission because there is something 
a little bit too big for it at the moment. High speed, 50 plus mile an hour cross traffic from both directions, I think fits that category pretty well. System error is kind of all encompassing of the, the red hands forced disengagement, random loss of navigate on autopilot when driving due to maybe some weather. That is arguably system limit though, when regard to rain and actual performance limitations, but any fluke with the system that forces you to either take over or have to disengage and navigate on autopilot, that's where that would go. Human is still what it meant before, both driver and pedestrian, cyclists, all the above that involves another human. Legal is anything where you're questioning the legality of the maneuver, from very obvious things like red lights or turning the wrong way on to oncoming traffic, as well as things like getting into bus lanes or perhaps carpool lanes or things that you're not supposed to be in. And I'm pretty happy that that, for the most part, stays pretty low on the causation tree. And then construction, pretty self-explanatory there too. Anytime you're around construction and it trips up the system and you have to take over. As I continue to gain more data with 10.11.2, this will shift and change a bit and the percentages will move around and we'll get a more robust fleshed out causation donut that'll be a better representation of 10.11.2's performance. Now as we wrap up here, I figured I would throw some extra stats on the screen just for fun so you guys can see some of my accomplishments slash experience that I've gained while doing this. Um, yes, my current odometer on my 2020 Model 3 is nearly 200,000 kilometers, and I might do a video at that point kind of talking about battery degradation, maintenance, the things I've had to do in my extreme use of the vehicle with rideshare. Let me know in the comments if that's something you guys would be interested in, if you have any questions about maybe things I've encountered or expenses you're wondering about or how the vehicle has performed overall. Over the last two, two and a half years, I've completed over 8,400 trips. I've had about 5,200 to 5,500 people on the beta since 10.8.1. That number kind of fluctuates because throughout the day, some trips I have two, three, four people. So this is a best approximation with a rather modest or sandbagged formula to get to this number. So it could be quite a bit more than this, but I figure 5,200 is a good, honest, modest guesstimation. Total City Streets beta usage. This is my actual time on beta, so not the public or NOA code, not manually driving. That 10,439 kilometers is specifically beta is engaged. And that 291 hours is the same thing. That is all of my recorded time in that 10,439 kilometers. You can think of it kind of like gaming or, or flight hours for anyone who's a pilot. That is my operational time versus just time I've been in the car. I have the numbers for manual and, and public time as well, but I didn't see the need to put that much information on the screen. If you're curious, let me know. I can tell you in the comments. And if you've seen my older Robotaxi videos, uh, the last two really aren't that surprising, but it might surprise some new viewers. I am manually driving the car closer now to about 1% of the time. Cumulative total is a little bit harder to reflect that just because the earlier builds of the beta had me driving a lot more because it wasn't as good. My manual driving on 10.11.2 and even 10.8.1 and 10.10.2 was down around 1.2 to 1.5%. With 10.11.2, it might dip below 1%. We will see. But I'm really happy to be back at these RoboTaxi reports. I'll be doing this every Monday to update everybody on all the information I'm gathering. Please let me know in the comments if you have questions, curiosities, feedback, things you want to see, maybe things I can represent better. I am gaining experience with every video and trying trying to better adapt this to my audience, so I appreciate all the feedback. Thank you again for your time, and I will see you guys in the next video.